They mostly come at night. Mostly. Hi, welcome to Synapse Shorts, um, a series of four to five minute videos just based upon you know, Synapse analytics, mostly around SQL pool. All right, so in today's video, I'm going to show you how to auto pause a, uh, how to start and stop a Synapse SQL pool from Azure Data Factory. So you can start it on a schedule or just start it and stop it before or after ADF jobs. Um, so I just want to make a call out that I've already done another video on how to stop and start SQL pools and resize them based upon Azure automation. So I'll have the link in the kind of the, the notes at the bottom. But I want to thank um, one of my colleagues at GBB called Lewis who showed me how to do this. So really this is all his idea, not mine. All right, so let's get down to it. So first of all, let's log into our Azure Synapse. There we go. All right. So here is our SQL pool. It is now currently paused. Um, so the method that we're going to use is we're going to use the REST API. Now, this is a lot harder than it looks. No, it's a lot easier than it looks. Well done. I'll leave that. I won't edit that out. I'll leave that in. So we use these methods, these REST APIs. So we want to pause it. We call this URL. And if we want to resume it, and of course, we call this or start it. We call this URL. Now, it looks quite complicated, but in fact, it's really it's just so simple. All right. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a data factory. So I'm just going to call this a called data factory. I'm going to call create data factory and I'm going to call it uh, my uh, demo data factory two. I'm going to create it in. Oh, someone's already got one. Um, my npm. There we go. Right. In my existing resource group, I'm going to do it in West uh, UK South. So in the same region as my data warehouse, but it it absolutely makes no difference where you create it for me doing this but if you were moving data around then yes it does make a big difference and that's it i mean it's just going to create a data factory now and this takes a couple of minutes so we'll just let that create oh it's done All right fab All right go into author and monitor Create a pipeline. Now we're going to call a, uh, a REST API or web API. We'll just hit web, drag it on. I'm going to call it something sensible called start DW. In settings here, um, we put the URL. Now this is the, the REST API that we're going to call. So we're going to call this one. So I'm going to, no, I'm going to, we don't need the, for this, we don't need the beginning of the post. We just need the URL and we don't need that end bit there. We just copy it to there or we'll paste that in. It's pretty simple. Now what we've got to do is replace um, certain bits on here. So like the subscription ID, we need to replace it with our subscription ID from our data warehouse. So the subscription ID is if we go um, to our that's pool, all the, all the information is on here. Here's our subscription ID. I just copy this across and I just replace subscription ID here with the subscription ID. Clearly, I didn't copy it properly. Copy. Oh, I pressed all. Oh, sorry. Yep, there we go. So, like that. 
resource group. So we need to replace that with our resource group, which is called, there we go, copy that. Once we've done this once, we only need to do the sort of replacing ones. Once we've done it once, um, we can cut and paste the whole string. Now, what you can do is you can create a data-driven pipeline and pass these in as parameters. So I'm hard coding them in there for now, just because I'm just demoing it. But I could create a pipeline pulling from a database or a table that passes all this information across. Now I only need the 7 aim bit. I don't need the entire name for here. So, database name, 7 aim, there we go. Space there. Right. And the data warehouse name, database name, all right. So up to now, all I've done is some um, cutting and pasting. And this is just information that I've got readily available. So it's quite obvious that I need to cut and paste the relative information into here. That's our, this is this is what we're going to call a resume, which is effectively as a start. This drop down is a post. This relates to that method at the beginning. Here. Scroll down. Body. Uh, this took me a little trial and error. Um, we don't need to pass anything in. So just empty close brackets empty squiggly bracket sorry we don't we're not getting any data set out we're not worried about it we're not worried about any link services not worried about any of the runtime we have to click on advanced here and this is this is the authentication method that data factory is going to use to talk to the web api for the data warehouse to then say start so i'm going to pick msi and then i get this resource and i need to put in bit of magic information in here uh, which I am just going to cut and paste I need to put in this HTTPS management.core.windows.net okay and there I have I am almost ready to run it but what I haven't done is I haven't given the data factory permissions to run um, to call any web methods on it so how do we do that well let's go and have a look so this is my data warehouse running on my server so to do it give it permissions this is the bit that I was a bit concerned about I go onto the server I go into access control I then do add a role assignment Now I'm not sure the best role to give it so this is just a just for demo purposes just to prove that it works um, but I'm sure uh, uh, there'll be a better role um, with less privileges I'm gonna be a contributor I mean which one of these do I pick I choose to drop down I choose data factory and then I have my data factory in here and I click Save and now my data factory now has permission to run those API's so we'll wait for that to save so now I'm going to do publish. So effectively, I'm just going to save it. And then I'm going to run it. I'm going to hit debug. As soon as I hit debug, I'm then going to click on the data warehouse. And so I see I'm going to do it now just to prove it. So we go on to here, go into databases, click on it. So you can see that it is in a, um, it's currently paused. So now I click here and I click debug. So that's just triggering it to run. And I click here. And it just switched to resuming. So we saw that message change. And then that icon should change. In fact, I could just hit refresh it sneakily.
Perfect. First time. See how easy that was? And now that I've set this up, I can actually do a copy. I can create a, should we call that? Let's call that, make it a bit neater. Let's do pipeline. Let's call this start DW. Clone. And we'll call this pause. We'll call it pause DW. Okay. Change this to be pause. And then on our API. So the actual command that we're calling is this resume. And at the end of this one, pause. So I just need to replace the word resume with pause on the end of here. So this is all exactly the same apart from, oh, let me get to the end. Um, resume, pause. Okay. Now I'll publish that, save that again. Publish. And now when I run this, I'll click on the data warehouse again, and then we should see it pause. So uh, I can actually just manually, I can do trigger now. Debug is just me being lazy and not being that familiar with Data Factory. I should hit trigger now, and I can create schedules. So I can pause it every couple of hours, every night at 7 p.m. when I know no one's around. But I'll hit trigger now, just on this one. Uh, oh, okay, all right. Yeah, let's hit debug. I'm going to go back on my data warehouse. And then this should update in a couple of seconds when... Yep, it's pausing. Yay, it's paused. Right, oh, I was paying attention then. So that's it. That's really simple um, demo of using Data Factory to pause a, a data warehouse. Um, and I might do something a bit more data driven, a bit fancier later. But um, that was super, super easy and nothing to be scared of. All right. Thank you very much. Bye.